Come on, good morning, church. God is good. Come on, a few of you believe it. God is good. And all the time. Come on, all the time. God is good, church. Hey, I know you've had a long week. I know you've had a lot thrown at you this week, but you know what? We serve a promise keeper, amen? Man, if that doesn't light your fire, you've got a wet wick. Come on. It was so exciting uh, having VBS, um, B- VBS here this week, and I just I want to say again really quickly, it was, it was just amazing to see all of our volunteers together. We had, w- last count, we had over 40 volunteers, f- over 40 people, over 40 adults come together and volunteer to, uh, to help this thing happen, and everything from security to teaching to crafts to food to music to sound, I mean, decorating, cleanup, I mean, it was just incredible. And then the last, the last I knew, we had over 60 different children um, register and attend VBS. So 60 kids just filled this place up, and uh, their parents, many of the parents came, and these were a lot of these children were, were, were uh, from the community, had never been here before, and so it was pretty exciting. We're really um, you're just praying that uh, we reap a harvest from that, amen? You know, and so it was just real, so incredible. And... Um, it, this was, it was such an incredible event, and, uh, you know, being able to see how, how we all came together and we worked, um, we worked together, and uh, we worked together to, to change people's lives. So, uh, let me really quickly, if, if you actually, if you helped with VBS in any way, shape, or form, would you stand real quick? I want to recognize you and just let's give them a big, come on, anybody, Will, come on, stand up, Maddie, MJ, let's give them a big, big thank you, can we? Yeah, a lot of people, and uh, it was just incredible. So, so, so the question that I want to ask is, um, so why work so hard because it was hard work, don't get me wrong. <laughs> in fact, as people have dragged themselves in this morning, hey, how you doing? I'm tired. I'm tired. And they had yesterday to kind of start to try to, you know, wind down and, and rest a little bit. And still, you know, two days later, they're still tired. You know, so, so why in the world would we work so hard to pull off a VBS? You know, why, why would we do that? Why would we spend the money, because it actually was a lot of money too, and energy for... For, for doing a VBS, or for that matter, any other event, you know, a, as a church, why would we do that? Well, let's, if you will, turn with me in our text today, and we're going to answer that question. It's going to help us a lot, kind of frame this up and help us to even understand who we are and what we do and why we do it as a church. See, today's sto- uh, text is actually one of the stories that we told during VBS, and it's really an incredible story. In Luke chapter 15, it's the story of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. But we're going to take a look at the first two. In Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10, we start with the parable of the lost sheep. And it says, now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. And then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven. Everybody say more. There will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and she loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. 
And in the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Isn't that incredible, church? See, in this, in this moment, now capture this with me. We're going to stop there. In this moment, people had, had gathered around Jesus to listen to him teach, and, and there were religious people that were among them, and the religious people kind of started gathering together, and they, they were criticizing Jesus. Can you imagine it? I, I mean, how many of you have ever been criticized before? Come on. Come on. How many? Listen, they're criticizing the Messiah. So they start criticizing Jesus and uh, kind of murmuring underneath, underneath their breath and criticizing him because he's hanging out with the wrong people. And, and here's the thing, listen, you can always tell a religious person from someone who has an authentic relationship with God. Church, hear me, this is important. You can always tell a religious person from a person who has an authentic relationship with God. See, religious people tend to be critical towards others. Whoa. I might be able to just finish the sermon right there and say amen go home. Come on, church. We got to pay attention to this. See, religious people have a tendency to criticize other people. And that's how you can begin to really see the difference between a religious person and an authentic relationship with God. See, religious people rarely, rarely are hard on themselves, but they love to be critical with others. Come on, give me an amen, church. See, there's a big difference between having a discerning spirit because some would be kind of high. Well, I just have a discerning spirit. No, you're just a critical person. See, there's a big difference between having a discerning spirit and having a critical spirit. We are told, the scripture tells us, to discern the spirits. Come on, amen? See, and that's actually an extremely important thing in this day and age because there are a lot of false spirits, false prophets, false gods in this world, a lot of false teachers in this, come on, amen? So we're told that we need to make sure that we have a discerning spirit. We're to, we're to discern the spirits, but listen, friends, a critical spirit can't even recognize when the spirit of the Lord is working. See, a person that's possessed with a critical spirit looks for the negatives and they believe the worst about people instead of trying to believe the best and seeing the good in them and what they're trying to do. See, sadly, there are a lot of religious people walking around thinking that they are righteous and thinking that they are discerning. When all they really have, listen, is a critical spirit. See, so these religious leaders who are filled with a critical spirit start muttering between themselves about, about Jesus' decision to spend time with irreligious people. See, they couldn't quite figure him out, could they? See, Jesus was holy, but he wasn't unapproachable. See, Jesus was dedicated to his faith, but Jesus wasn't flashy in trying to impress people. And the one thing that drew people to Jesus was he was willing to spend time with people that the religious leaders tried to avoid. So what happens is Jesus hears them murmuring and decides that, that their critical 
atti- he discerns their critical attitudes and, and then tells a, a series of three stories to try to drive home a few points to why he spent time with irreligious people. So he tells a story of a shepherd who lost one of his sheep, a woman who lost a valuable coin, and a father who loses his son to the world. See, Jesus was a master storyteller, so he weaves within all three of these parables three things that he wants them to focus in on, and the first is this. Number one, the first thing that Jesus is trying to drive home to these religious leaders who had this critical spirit is this. The first thing he wants them to see is that there was something considered of great value that was lost. Something of great value was lost. See, in the first part of the story, there's a shepherd that loses one of his sheep, and, and he's, he's, he's just really distraught over it. In the second part of it, a woman loses one of her ten silver coins, and, and she's distraught over it. In the third part of the story, a, a son actually has lost his, his, I mean, his father has lost his son to the ways of the world. And what Jesus really hones in in this first part here was that all three things were of great value, weren't they? See, for a shepherd to lose one of his sheep would have been a huge loss for him. A woman who has ten silver coins loses one of them. It's a big deal. And a father who has two sons, he loses one of them to the world, and he is hurting greatly over it. See, if you've ever lost something that you felt was of great value, then you know the sinking feeling in your heart when you can't find it. Have you ever lost something? Right? And you look around and you look and you look and and you're like, not just, you know, your mind's frustrated, but there's, especially if it's of great value to you. There have been a few times when I've lost, I don't even remember what they were, but I can remember that sinking feeling in my gut of like, man, I know that I had this thing and boy, I hope I haven't lost this thing forever. Have you ever felt that? It's like, man, I hope that I haven't lost this because it's valuable to me. See, here's what Jesus is saying. Listen, friends, here's what Jesus is saying. He's saying people matter to God. Listen, you matter to God. Matthew 6, 26, Jesus said these really powerful words. He said, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them, takes care of them, right? Are you not much more valuable than they? You are valuable to God. Psalm 8, I love what the psalmist says here. He says, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. This is an incredible thing to think about the reality that, listen, you matter to God. Every human on the face of the earth matters to God. Can I get an amen? Every person matters to God. See, people matter to God. God cares about you more than what you realize. God cares about you. You matter. Listen, your struggles matter to God. Your hopes matter to God. Your fears matter to God. Your present situation matters to God. Your future destiny matters to God. You matter to God. And here's what else is amazing. Lost people matter to God. Lost people matter to God. See, Jesus wanted the religious leaders to know that those items that were lost, the sheep, the coin, the son, they all had great significance and that they were lost and he wanted the religious people to know that that the people who were outside the religious circles mattered to god they mattered then and listen church they matter now don't they they matter now those who are far from god matter to him and and before any of us get too self-righteous We need to remember that we've all been in that lost condition before, haven't we? Come on, can I get an amen? We've all been in that lost condition. Uh, Not one person born 
is exempt from being spiritually lost. In fact, we are born with sin in our hearts, a spiritual sickness that we have all inherited in our spiritual DNA from Adam and Eve that draws us away from God, doesn't it? Doesn't it? It draws us away from God. We've all been born in that lost condition. See, we aren't born with the condition that draws us towards God. Where we're running, we wake up, you know, in the morning, I'm like, I'm running towards God. No, we're born with the spiritual DNA that draws us away from God. Have you ever felt that draw, that pull, that pull of sin? That's, what, that's, that's what's inside of every, every person that's ever been born. We've all been in that place. See, Isaiah 53, 6 says this, we all, everyone say all, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So we've all, we're all in that camp, aren't we? We've, we've all been in that camp, because it doesn't mean that, that we're all still lost. I mean, if you come to Jesus, you've been found. I mean, praise God if you've been found. And, and I don't think that found people should act like they're lost. Come on, church. Found people shouldn't act like they're lost, nor should they say, I'm, continue, I'm still lost. No, if you're found, you're found. Come on, church. But here's the thing that we need to remember in this whole idea of, of, of being born lost and being pulled away from God. Some people wander further than others, don't they? I mean, some people wander. I mean, they wander way, 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 way away from God. They wander and they wander, and the next thing you know, they are, they're not one mile. They're five miles. They're ten miles. They're a hundred miles away. Some people wander far away from God. Some people don't quite wander quite so far. They've just got outside of the neighborhood, and they're lost. But understand this. Lost is lost. I mean, you might have only gotten a little bit away, a little bit. See, here's the problem. Sometimes we compare ourselves with those people that are way out there 100 miles away. I haven't murdered anybody. I haven't been, I haven't been you know, peddling drugs. But you know what? Our heart's attitude have been far away from God, and we might have a little bit more of a clothing of righteousness. But let me tell you, friends, lost is lost. And it doesn't matter where you are in this place, lost needs to be found. Come on, church. See, it's so important to remember, see, people matter to God, but not only do people matter to God, lost people matter to God. Ezekiel 34, 6 says this, My sheep wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched. Or looked for them. See, these people here that Jesus was dealing with, listen, many of them were probably living lives they shouldn't be living. Doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Maybe even hanging out in places that weren't the best places to be hanging out. But listen, what's really amazing about our God is, is that he is willing to, to, to go after lost people because lost people matter to God no matter where they find themselves. Listen to what God says again in Ezekiel 34. Go down a little further from verse 6 to a verse 11. It says, for this is what the sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. I will search for them. That's good news, church. We've got a God who searches. There's not one of us here in this room that God has not been searching for you. God's been searching after you. He's been running after you. He is what, what Jonathan Edwards called the hound of heaven. He comes after us. He's, he's searching for us, looking for us. That is amazing news, church. He's searching for us. And even in our lost condition, whether you're just outside the neighborhood or you're 100 miles away, the good news is, is we've got a God who is out looking for lost people. Why? Because lost people matter to God. See, we matter to God so much that he wants, he, he wants, he wants, his, he wants every lost person to be found. And he wants us all to understand the second part of the story in this number two See, something valuable was lost, but the second thing, an all-out search was made for that lost thing, wasn't it? See, the shepherd leaves, 
He says, suppose a shepherd loses one of his sheep, he'll leave the 99 and go after the one to find the one that's lost. He's not going to just say, ah, you know what, I'm satisfied with the 99. The wolf might have killed that one. I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to matter, you know, worry about it. No, he says, the shepherd leaves the 99 in the flock and goes after the one. The woman with the 10 coins. She loses the one, and what does she do? She turns over the furniture. You ever do that? Lose something, and you're like turning over the furniture. It's a, she sweeps every corner of the house, and, and she's calling her friends, obviously, because she calls them at the end again. So she's calling her friends, and she was like, man, I've lost this coin. Can you remember when you were over here what I did with it? And, and I'm looking for it. Can you come and help me look for it? And they turn the, the, the furniture over, and they're sweeping every little corner. She probably did it twice, three times, four times. And then when she found it, boy, she was happy. But she was looking for it. And the amazing thing about the story of the prodigal son later on is the father, it says he was looking. He was looking for his son. Every day he would wake up. Every day he would look down the road. Every day he was searching for his son, searching the horizon for his son to start making his way back. We had a moment this this week in VBS, that was a that was a little bit disconcerting, a little bit scary. So the place is packed; it's full, and our little grandson Mason is here, and uh, and, and my daughter entrusts us with Mason, you know. And so Amy, she she was out in the lobby for a moment, and uh, she she set him down. I think they were getting a drink. She set Mason down. Somebody asked her a question. She turned around answered them literally turned back around and mason was gone oh little boys right mason's gone it's just like mason's gone and and so like it's an immediate like where'd he go i walk in the room they're like mason's gone i'm like what mason's gone and so i'm like Lock the place down, you know, and we're like looking all over and people are scattering around and literally like we couldn't locate him we, for, for a, like a minute. We could not locate Mason. We talk about the longest minute in my life. I mean, if I were a, a cat, I just died nine lives. Okay, you know, it was, it was crazy. I, I bolted out the front door. I'm like some crazy person. Come in, take my grandson. I'm going to jump on their car. You know, I mean, just all kinds of crazy stuff goes through your mind. I'm like, you know, you go out in the, the parking lot. I'm looking around for him. I come back in, and they're like, we can't. And then finally somebody, somebody comes up. Oh, yeah, he was in the ladies' room. <laughs> she had sat him down, turned around, answered a question. Somebody had come out of the ladies' room. Mason had to go potty. So he shot in the, in the women's room. She had checked the, the men's room. She didn't check the ladies' room. And uh, so all the while, he's in there. He's going pee. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that boy. It was so funny because we were like, okay, no, we're not going to tell Aaron. <laughs> we're like, if we ever want to keep our, you know, grass. And so uh, somebody dropped the, you know, somebody accidentally, Sue, wherever she is, <laughs> mentioned it. We're like, oh, yeah, we had an incident, but he was okay. <laughs> so it was funny. But you know what? We, we An all-out search was made. Why? Because he was valuable. He's valuable. And, and the truth, man, and we would not have stopped searching until we found him. We were in high gear. Right? High gear. A, a few years back, we loved to camp. A few years back, we had um, a friend. Uh, she came and joined us uh, for the day at uh, at the camp, and she had her two children, and kind of almost the same situation happened, and she just kind of turned around, and her son whew, was just, like, gone. He was off playing with one of his kids, but, boy, she went, whew, you know, she was terrified that her, you know, her son was missing, and, man, she was not going to be settled until she found him. See, and, and listen, friends, that, get that, get that, get that. I think sometimes we, like, yeah, we nod. But you know what? That's the type of intensity that Jesus has. It's not going to stop until as many lost people are found as possible. 
There's an intensity about them. An all-out search. An all-out search. See, that's what Jesus is trying to do for those people that the religious leaders, they were criticizing. Instead of criticizing, listen, instead of criticizing, instead of being filled with a critical spirit, they should have been a part of the search and rescue team. If anybody should have been a part of the search and rescue team going after lost people should have been the religious leaders of the day. And isn't that true of the church? If there's anybody ever that should be a part of the rescue team out rescuing lost people, it ought to be the church. Instead of standing back and just criticizing those who are doing it. See, Matthew even went as far as to say, Jesus, he records Jesus as saying, listen, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. So many times what happens is in the church, the church wants to make it about the healthy. The church wants to make it about me. Feed me. Feed me, pastor. Feed me, church. Well, it's about me. It's about me. No, wait a minute. Jesus said, listen, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. He says, I've not come to call the righteous, Thank God you're righteous. I've not come to call the righteous. I've come to call sinners. See, Jesus was all about seeking and saving those who were lost. In fact, he said in Luke 19, 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Friends, finding the lost is our job. It's our ministry. Amen? Someone once said, too many Christians are are no longer fishers of men, but keepers of the aquarium. See, too many of us, instead of being fishers of the men, we just kind of watch the fish that have already been found. But listen, let me tell you, when we find lost people, that's a good day. Nothing better. See, because the last part that Jesus emphasized in the story, he could have left it there, right? The last part that Jesus emphasizes in the story is probably the best part of it. See, when lost people are found, listen, number three, a celebration happened when the lost was found. See, Jesus finishes each and every one of these stories with this amazing celebration that's thrown a, a celebration. He says, I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Hey, it's awesome having a church full of, of righteous people who have come to God, and that's an assumption. Okay? It's wonderful to have that. But you know what? It is even more wonderful having one person, that's a person who's lost, walk in the doors and find Christ. And and, and there's a celebration that ought to occur because the lost has been found. Let me tell you, that's powerful, church. See, how about the woman who loses the coin and when she finally finds it, says when she finds it, Jesus says, she calls her friends and she calls the neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I've found my lost coin. In the same way, he says, I tell you, there is, is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Isn't that amazing? Every time a sinner, this just blows my mind, every time a sinner repents, there's a There's a celebration of heaven in heaven in in the presence of the angels over that one who has come home. Wow. I mean, we, we love a good celebration, don't we? I mean, I do. I love a good celebration. We celebrate all kinds of things, don't we? We celebrate when our team wins the Super Bowl. Right? We celebrate when, our, when someone graduates from, from high school, right, or graduates from college. We, we celebrate when someone gets married or they have a child. We, we celebrate when someone gets a promotion in their job. We celebrate when someone buys a house. We celebrate when someone retires from their job. We even have a life celebration for somebody who has passed, who has passed into eternity. I mean, what would life be? without celebrations. And what's amazing is God celebrates with all of heaven when a sinner repents from their sin and moves from death to life. Because that's what happens when we repent of our sins. We cross over from death 
to life. And there's a celebration that occurs in heaven. When a person who has been far from God comes near to him, God celebrates. When a person no longer lives estranged from God, but realizes not only that they need him, but he's waiting with open arms. Listen, there's a celebration when that happens. Listen, God celebrates. Friends, we celebrate. We celebrate when lost people enter into our doors. The church is not just for the found. And the church should never just make all their programming and all their budget and everything about the found. Come on. We celebrate. We celebrate the lost. We celebrate and, and we, we understand they matter to God. And we celebrate when one person, when even one if it's worth one in all of heaven celebrating, then it's worth when one, you know, comes to Christ. And we ought to just celebrate. And we know for certain there were children this week. We had children this week that had zero understanding of the Bible, zero understanding of Jesus, zero understanding. And, and we got to lead them closer to the Savior. Isn't that good? This week was worth every ounce of our energy, every ounce of our focus, every penny that was spent. This week was worth it all because lost people matter to God. Amen. Would you stand with me as we pray? church with your heads bowed and your eyes closed I just want you to think about this for a moment think about this we have a God who made us and thinks that we are valuable no matter who you are no matter where you've been no matter how far you've been you've wandered away no matter how lost you have been, you have a God who believes in you, thinks that you are valuable, loves you. You are his treasure. And he's searching and searching and searching. You have a God that is they turn away from their lostness they hear the voice of the Savior who loves them who says that they matter saying come out into the light come out of the darkness come into the light repent of your sins and turn away from your sins turn to me and walk in the light walk in being found he's calling us no matter who we are no matter what we've done to repent to say Lord Jesus Lord Jesus I'm sorry for my sin Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, I've been lost. But I hear your voice, and I want to be found. So I put my hand in yours. I'm sorry for my sins. I repent of them. I turn away from them, and I turn to you. And God, right now, I'm walking out of the darkness. Come on, this is an important part of the salvation prayer. I'm walking out of the darkness, and I'm walking into your light. I'm not going to live anymore, any longer as being lost. Thank you for finding me. And so I'm putting my hand in yours, and I'm walking into the light, and I'm going to follow you and walk with you for the rest of my days being found.
Jesus because you've come home. Stay home. Stay close to the Father. Thank you, God, so much. Thank you, you love every person here in this room. Thank you that you have searched for us, searched and searched, called. And God, we want to have ears to hear and turn to you and repent of our sins and walk in in the light as you are in the light. And so, Lord, we will walk from you with you from this day forward, turning away from the darkness, turning away from the lostness and following you. And thank you for rejoicing over me. Thank you for rejoicing over me being found. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Lord, we celebrate. We celebrate lives that are changed, lives that are transformed. Help us, God, to be a church that continuously seeks after the lost, celebrates when they are found, and is patient in, in, in going out and in searching and not giving up. Thank you, oh God, for not giving up on us. We pray this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Now, isn't God good? Yeah, God's good. Do me a favor. I want you to turn around. And before you leave today, I want you to shake at least three people's hands. Three people's hands. Shake some hands today. God bless you as you go. You're dismissed.